。星期六晚凌晨十二点，梁小辉。Welcome to Hong Kong Margaret. Thank you. And welcome to my show. Thank、uh, we you. We are family. That's the name of the show. Oh, the fabulous. The only gay show in Hong Kong for the last ten years.、Mm-hmm. Radio show. Okay, welcome to Hong Kong. So、uh, I, I know that it's not only your first Hong Kong debut.、Mm-hmm. It's actually your first Asian tour. Yes. So that's your very first time to test the tolerance level of the Asian market about your edgy and fierce jokes. <laughs> so. How's it so far? The reception. I mean, what's the best stop and what's the worst stop? <laughs> It's all been great. There hasn't been anything bad. There hasn't been anything negative at all. It's been really tremendous, and it's exciting. You know, you you have this.、Um, Reputation in Asia that it, it's it's more conservative, but in truth, it's not.、Okay. It's like so progressive too,、yeah. because people are so hungry for a different perspective and and、um, somebody that's、um, I guess a little bit more、uh, forthright.、Uh, I I'm just trying to plug into what's happening here. I, I try to do a lot of jokes about Hong Kong, trying to write about、um, the.、Uh, Uh, Fishball riots, the you know the Mong Kok, yeah, yeah.、Uh, the yeah, whole、yeah. thing happening there, and then also、um, writing about C Y Leung's daughter and like <laughs> about <laughs> the booksellers and、um, just getting in there and like kind of trying to figure out exactly what to get into. You know, talking about Bishop John Tong or whatever it is, you can sort of take the. You're really informed about what's really happening in Hong Kong.、I'm、trying to, you know, that's what's important to me is that I can touch on all of the things that I have learned about, and then continue on. Like, okay, well, now this is sort of my foundation. So when I come back, I can build on that. So this is what I do all over the world. Like when I do shows in Europe, I, I definitely take a lot of time to spend spend like. Learning the place, and so then when I go back, it's like people are excited because then the shows have another layer of excitement. So it's because something I do、um, okay. as part of my work, and so it makes sense. Okay, if I could, you know, make some suggestion, I think you should touch on the topic about menstruation. Yes, because <laughs> because your show coincided with the International Women's Day. Yes, you know some local, you know, a women's group here are actually lobbying for menstrual leave. Yeah, they should have it. Yeah, yeah. They should have it. That's a really good idea. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For okay, sure. I'm、yes. looking forward to that. Good. And、uh, do you know that、uh, over the past two weeks,、uh, it's actually very gay in Hong Kong. First,、mm-hmm. we had the、uh, Madonna concert in Hong Kong,、mm-hmm. and then Rufus Wainwright was coming and、oh, performing、Rufus. his opera. Rufus、and、is great. And then last Sunday, we have that our singer-songwriter John Grant performing. Oh, great!、And、That's then you. wonderful. Yes. I-, I thought it would be so fun if your show coincided with、uh, you know Madonna's concert. Yes. And you can have your you know. <laughs> you put on that joke again. I would love to. Were、That'd、you in touch、fun. with Madonna after that?、Um, well, I、uh, I don't know her. You know what's weird is that we haven't crossed paths.、Um, but Madonna one time sent a woman who she thought was me a bottle of wine in a restaurant, and、really? then the woman came and pretended to be me、okay. for dinner with Madonna. So Madonna thinks we're friends. Okay. But the truth, we never met. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny that you never know each other personally. I know. It's weird. Both gay icons. It's weird. Okay. Well, on behalf of the、uh, you know local community, I think we are forever in debt to you, and I think someone should give you an award called、I、International Fears Fathead Award. I love it. <laughs> I would love it. That would be so amazing. And you're so right. You are forever the backbone of the、uh, you know LGBT community. True. Without you, we are nothing. Oh, it's it's, it's all me. In your own words. It's all me. <laughs> <laughs> So,、uh, when did you realize that、uh, you have that affiliation, affection for、uh, the LGBT community, especially gay men? Well, I grew up around gay men. I grew up around、uh, this community in San Francisco、okay. in in the seventies, and so it was a very big time for、yeah. gay rights with Harvey Milk, and、yeah. people were getting very political. And so I grew up around AIDS, and so I, I had a lot of experience as a child and as an adult with the gay community. Okay, so do you remember who's your first gay friend or the first you know gay person you ever come to meet? My first gay friend, his name is David Forbes, and he is my father's.、Um, my he was always in love with my father. Okay. And so my father adored him because my father is very vain. 
So he loves when people pay attention to him and have crushes on him. So he loved David Forbes, and then David drew a, a picture. He was he's a painter. He is a painter. Okay. So he did a wonderful portrait of my father, and so it still hangs up very in a very pr a prideful place in my parents' house. And um, so he's like my gay nanny. You know, he was sort of my <laughs> other father, and. Uh, he, he really raised me in a lot of ways, and he took me to get tattooed, and so, you know, he, he showed me a different side of life, like okay. that sort of artistic side. I know that, you know, reading from your past interviews, you were heavily bullied uh, mm -hmm. in school. Yes. For being not beautiful enough, not slim enough, not mm -hmm. white enough, not mm -hmm. Asian enough. Yes. So, uh, does it explain your early affiliation and affection for gay men or, you know, just people, you know, yeah. at the fringe. Yeah, also because I'm also gay myself, so that's yeah. that's something to understand. Like when you are queer and different, that makes you um, very open to bullying because other kids can understand that there, there's something different about you, and that's really hard. I think kids can be very awful, and so I had a very hard upbringing in that way. Okay. Uh, you said that you are bisexual, mm -hmm. uh, even though you had, you know, married before. You got a new boyfriend now, mm -hmm. and uh, you even have sexual relationship with transgender folks. Yes. Can yes. I call you pansexual? Pansexual works because um, I think bisexual is too binary. Because yeah. I think sexuality and gender encompasses more than both male and female. It's really infinite. Okay. And there are so many, you know, new terms coming up for, you know, different gender identities. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this ridiculous term? Heteroflexible. A heteroflexible. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think that's great. I mean, it's sort of, I'm not sure exactly what that means. It means that you're straight, but you're willing to do whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? You're willing to have, you no know, sex with men on the side, but you don't want to yeah. prove yourself as gay. Right. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's legitimate. Everybody has their own definition. Okay. Uh, talking about you know transgender, mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of you know visibility uh, about transgender folks, uh, especially in the states in you know last year. But uh, did you hear about the uh, breaking news today mm. about the Wachowski brothers? Oh yes, yes. So the other uh, yeah. Lily now, Andy, Lily Andy turns into yeah. uh, Lily. Lily, yeah, wow, it's great. Amazing. So now that means um, yeah. So now that that um, I, I don't I don't not not heard of that before. Where siblings were both. I mean, yeah, I, I know I know a lot of siblings who are both gay, and so this is the first time I I've known about siblings who are both trans. But that's great. But they are not twins. So, no. But that's a very interesting. It's really interesting. You know, uh, breaking news. So being a fag hat, tell mm -hmm. me honestly, does it affect your relationship with straight men? Because you always know. compare gay men and straight yes. men, and all you always prefer gay men and even gay dicks. <laughs> always, it's always better. It's always better. It's always nicer. It's always the better choice. But no, it doesn't affect my relationships with straight men. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's been so much, you know, uh, advancement in terms of uh, marriage equality in the states uh, last yes. year. And I know that you are actually a deputized marriage commissioner. Yes, And that yes. means you, are, you can legally perform a gay marriage. Yes. So how many gay couples or lesbian couples you have married so far? I've, I've married quite a few. I've been doing it since about 2005. So I've been doing many, many ceremonies over the years, you know. And then they're, they're, um, the legality of them has changed over time. Now it's legal in the United States and it's recognized. but. Some of them may not be. Some of them were mm -hmm. sort of more of a unofficially done. Okay. Um, but now I'm legally able to do it. Uh, and I know that during your tour, you have some social media campaign called uh, Marry Me Margaret. Yes. And you're going to marry one uh, gay or lesbian couple during your tour? Yes. Did you do something like that during your Hong Kong tour? No, not yet. No, so maybe not? next time. Next time. Next we're time. hungry for that. I would love that. <laughs> okay. So uh, did you expect the battle of marriage equality can be won in the States last year? I didn't expect it, but I'm amazed that it happened, and I'm so grateful that it happened. You know, it's incredible. We yeah. we never saw it coming, uh, but we've been working on it for a long time, and okay. I'm really happy that it happened. I was actually at the San Francisco Gay Pride when that happened. Yes. Oh, I was too. Are you were there too? Yes, but I was there the night. I was there the Thursday night in. Um, so I was at a big Kimpton party, the hotel okay. party, and then with all of the Pride officials, and then um, we found out Friday morning that it was happening, and mm. then I left Friday during the day, so I wasn't there that night for Pride, but it was really an exciting time. Okay. 
Uh, some say that gay culture getting more and more accepted by the mainstream these days. Yeah. And some worry that eventually the gay culture will, you know, lose its edge. I What don't do you think, think so. <laughs> I don't think so because we still have to fight the religious right. We yeah, still have right. to fight a lot of homophobia. You know, there's a, a big movement here in Hong Kong um, that is uh, the Society for Truth and Light, and they they want to make sure that they retain their right to. Be homophobic, which is insane. Mm -hmm. That's so stupid. Okay. And so I, I just don't understand why they would be that way. But we still have to fight a lot. Yeah, it's still a long journey yes. to equality. Are you aware of the uh, recent controversy surrounding Sam Smith's acceptance speech uh, in Oscar? Oh yes. Yeah. What do you think? Well, Sam Smith can't <laughs> catch a break. You know, everybody wants to hate on him because he always makes mistakes. Like he, I know. He always like. Tweets the wrong thing, and he didn't understand that racism existed. Yeah, I know. I know people yeah. are really mean to him. It's like he's living in a bubble. I know. He's really, but he's really, he's really just kind of isolated. I guess he doesn't really know, but that's okay. He always like very ready to apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's very sweet, but at the same time, he's yeah. a very uh, you know influential gay icon, especially right. from this generation. Right. You should know more about our I history. Know. You should really know. I mean, that's the thing, though, is that people have the need to be so. Right now, especially social media, and so it's hard. I think. Okay, uh, you have a lot of edgy jokes, mm -hmm. like you call out, you know, John Travolta as gay before. Yes. And uh, I just want to ask you, uh, was there any one joke that got you into the worst trouble before? I don't think so. I think uh, there's something disarming about comedy, and and that there hasn't been a real backlash to anything. Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty lucky that way. So I, I don't know. I don't think about it too much. Okay. Uh, as a fearless comedian who never shy away from any uh, politically incorrect topics, you even talk about your you know own childhood sexual experience uh, in your recent shows, mm -hmm. side show. And uh, but are there any topics that you still think is really hard to touch on? I don't it's think like so. I don't it's know. like Louis C.K. recently on Saturday Night Live. Uh, he tried to touch on the very taboo topic of uh, pedophilia, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, well, it caused quite a lot of you know controversy. Yes, I mean there's a lot of. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of suffering around that issue. I mean, I I experienced it too, so I I know that that's a really terrible thing. I, I like Peter mm -hmm. from the other side. You know, when you're molested, you get really really defensive about anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, everybody has their own boundaries about what they think is funny, and I think it's important to push them. Okay. So you have a new single. I want to kill my rapist. Yes. Uh, did you decide to write a song about your own childhood, you know, abuse uh, experience? Because even you find that it's something that you can't really discuss in a comedy kind of context. You have to, you know, try to express it in some other format. Yes. Well, it's almost to to um, find a way to express the rage yeah. because you know in comedy anger is really something that doesn't work. So you have to find a way to. Um, Couch the rage in something that is more palatable, and I think that's the way to do it with your music. Okay, as I recall, I remember that you already touched on your uh, sexual abuse experience back in the 90s mm -hmm. in some of your routines, mm -hmm. but the media only caught on recently. Yes. Was it due to the uh, the attention regarding the uh, Bill Cosby scandal? Yeah, I think so. I think that people now are more willing to discuss it. That it's now more out in the open because of. These kinds of events, you know, there's a lot of things that are coming to the forefront, and I think feminism has really gotten um, much more bold in expressing what it needs, which is good. Okay, so what do you think about the uh, recent Joe Biden's uh, pledge at Oscars, and uh, also mm -hmm. Lady Gaga's performance, Great. and with that many uh, sexually abused victims joining on stage? It's so powerful, it's, and that's just a fraction of the the people who've been affected by it. I mean, it's really. And a really a global issue, and um, such a big, big problem for men and women. So I thought Gaga was great, and Joe Biden was great, yeah. and this was an important thing. And what's your take on the uh, Kishi case too? Well, uh, I think she shouldn't have to work with Dr. Luke. I think she's got to be. Um, I, I mean, whatever happened, she's not. Um, you know, there's no criminal charges filed, so she is letting him off easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's like she just wants wants to be free, and I think that that's really important. 
Okay. Uh, recently, a lot of you know celebrities such as uh, Taylor Swift and even Adele mm -hmm. are coming forward to support Kesha. Yeah. Uh, I understand the sentiment, but at the same time, it's like we don't even get a, a fact straight yet about mm -hmm. what's really going on. Do you think it's a little bit too early to come forward to support her? Like well, that? no, because it's not like she's asking him to go to prison. Okay. All she's trying to do is get out of her contract, which should be okay. easy. You know, it would be one thing if it was about him going to uh, jail. But this is not that. This is her wanting to not have to make music with him, which is totally reasonable. For I mean, mm. she should not have to make music with him just because she just doesn't want to. It should just be an easy choice. But I don't know why it's so difficult. Okay, uh, you mentioned in the past that even though your family knew about the uh, sexual abuse, mm -hmm. they uh, prefer not to talk about it, address it. Mm -hmm. So right. does it show that it's a very typical kind of self denial? mentality among the Asians. Very much, very typical. And the problem is, is they don't understand that their silence is really showing that they are accomplices. That this is something that allows predators to continue generation after generation. It's something that happens so much in Asian families. And the more we are silent about it, the more it will continue. So do you agree that we are living in a very sick culture? We tend to criminalize the victims instead of the rapists and the abusers. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really a problem. And we we need to shift that thinking in order to heal, I think. That's really important. Okay. Well, one last question about Kaylin Jenner, I have to ask. Uh -huh. Well, she suddenly come forward to support Ted Cruz, yes. who's one of the most you know, anti-LGBT candidates. So anti-gay, and it's crazy. And I don't think that, I don't think Kaylin's very smart. I mean, that's the problem is that she has really 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 old ideas and thinking about politics and gay politics and she doesn't really know what to do i wish she'd listen more to jenny boylan who's also on imk who's a really really smart really 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 political person and and, and as is candace kane i mean she really needs to listen to the other people on her show but uh, I think she's just learning. Okay. It just, just doesn't know yet. And it seems like, seems like she's always speaking for her own invested interests more yes. than anything else. Well, yes, but it's, she's still thinking in old terms, you know, and, and you think about Bruce. Bruce was a Republican. Bruce was very conservative. Bruce, Bruce was not very aware of what being trans was like or being trans <clears throat> and political was like. So. Now, Caitlin needs, needs to learn about that. Okay. Well, this is actually the second time I bump into you. Yes. I saw you the first time when you were touring uh, Provincetown, yes. in Massachusetts, like yes. 16 or 17 years ago. Wow. You were riding on a bicycle yes. Yes. and got some difficulties balancing. Yes. And I stopped you in the middle of the road and started to chat you up. Yes. It's a very different time. Tell me one thing. What's so different between 2015 and, say, 2000? Well, you know, this that was before 9-11. That was before really pol political, like everything. All of our, our thinking towards the way the world was was different. And now things have become very urgent. Also, we didn't have social media then in the same way that we do now. So we weren't talking about things in the same way. So it's just become very intense, everything. Uh, combining with the political climate and the way that we are able to talk about things. So it's it's in a, a different time, for sure. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. It's Margaret, bitch. Uh -huh. Bitch, the best song ever. Nobody's Wait. gonna hold me down no more. I told my woman. Just turn around. I told my woman. Get out.